First, I want to thank Handshow for sending out this dash screen for me to look at today. These dash screens for the Model 3 and Y have been out for a while now. This is now the second generation screen from Handshow. It is smaller and a more compact design with a screen that has smaller bezels. You'll see more with the unboxing. Taking the box out of the shipping bag, it has an outer sleeve with a nice car graphic on top and a view of how it looks in the Tesla on the side. And that's it, no other pictures or specs are on the box. I'll remove the outer sleeve to reveal the inside white cardboard box. Inside on the top is the operation guide. For the installation guide, you can download that from the website or watch this video. Skimming through the operation guide gives a lot of info on how to use the device. I'll cover that in part two of this video coming out soon. Below that, you can see it's well packed with lots of foam to cradle the contents. I'll take out the items and show you them in detail. The orange tool is a plastic pry bar for removing trim in the car. I must have at least a dozen of these in my tool bench by now. There are two bags that contain wiring harnesses. When you order this screen, it only may contain one, depending on your selection when ordering. The first harness is for the Intel Atom CPU in the Model 3 and Y. The second bag contains the harness for the AMD Ryzen CPU in newer Model 3 and Y vehicles. Now for the main unit. Removing the packing foam from both ends reveals a plastic bag holding the screen. This is an updated version with a slim bezel 9-inch HD touchscreen with a 1920 by 720 resolution. On the left side is a speaker. Underneath are two wires for communication and power. You can see that there are nine plastic fins that stick out. Those are used to secure the screen to the vent holes in the dashboard. On the right side is a flap that covers the USB-C port. I have a USB-C cable to show you. This port is supposed to work with Android Auto wired connections. It also is where a USB flash drive with firmware updates can be connected to the screen when one is available. Previous screens had firmware updates that you could download off of the Handshow website. The screen has a temporary protector on it to prevent scratches. You can remove this later after installation. Lastly, in the box was one remaining item. In this bag, there is a gray metal backing plate used for fixing the screen to the vent along with six screws. These are very small screws. You will need a small screwdriver to install them. I used a PH00 Phillips head screwdriver. Unfortunately, one doesn't come in the box. When ordering, you need to know your car's CPU. Bring it up in the main menu and press software. Look for the words additional vehicle information in blue letters. Going down this list, you will see infotainment processor with your particular CPU. Mine happens to be the Intel Atom. Here is a closer look at the Intel Atom wiring harness. It is made up of a multi-wire connector that is a splitter. It will form a Y adapter when plugged into the car. The existing cable is removed from the CPU and plugged into the female connector. And this harness's male connector will then plug into the car, effectively piggybacking into the system. The red and blue wires are at the end of a several foot long cable that will attach to the screen. Newer 2022 Model 3 and Y will have the AMD Ryzen, a much newer and more powerful CPU. The AMD Ryzen harness is very similar. The same Y adapter male and female connectors and the long cable with the red and blue plugs. In addition, it has another cable connected to it that must be run through the car's front firewall and connect to the 12 volt battery. This is due to the power requirements of the new AMD system. Here are the two plugs from the screen close up. The blue and red are similar. The male plugs from the screen attach to the female plugs from the long cable. Inside there are four pins and there is a notch on the plug that aligns the connector so that it only goes in one way as you can see here. I want to show you how the backing plate attaches to the screen. 
the holes on the plate align with the holes on the back of the screen. The red and blue wires go through the large sensor holes as seen here. And then the screws get attached to every other hole. Now on to the installation. Let's start on the driver's side. We can begin to take apart the dash in other areas. Remove the side trim piece as shown here. Note my car is from 2018 and there is a second piece that needs to be removed right here. Newer cars don't have this piece. On the passenger side, do the same thing. Gently lift up the front edge of the dashboard and it will pop up. Do this on both the passenger and driver sides. Once it is loose, angle the dashboard so the part you are grabbing goes up and lift the whole dashboard out. I have the dashboard on my workbench so it's easier to work on. Note all of the dashboard vent holes along the indentation that goes across the entire top surface. When I tilt the dashboard up, you can see the cutout area where the steering wheel goes. We are basically centering the screen so that it is located in this area. Depending on your seating position, whether you sit straight back in your seat or lean towards the door or lean towards the center of the car, you may want to adjust this location. I'm going for the center and using the recommendation from Handshow. I'll also use some blue painter's tape to mark the areas where we need to insert the wires. From the left side, count the open vent holes. Count to 25, and then I mark the area where the left tab will get inserted. Count an additional 4, and at 29, mark it B for the blue wire. Now count 3 more, and at 32, mark R for the red wire. Insert the blue and red cables into the proper vent holes. Angle the dashboard up so you can see underneath. And then pull the wires through the opening. Insert the display's leftmost tab into the marked hole. Then push the display all the way in. Make sure the wires go in correctly and are not pinched in any way. Carefully flip over the dashboard, use a towel or cloth so that the surface doesn't get marred on the other side. You can see the display tabs that are now showing through the vents underneath. Place the metal fixing plate on with the curved edges towards the underside of the dash. Insert the red plug through the large right opening, and then the blue plug through the large middle opening next to it. Line up the plate so that the holes on the tabs underneath show through the screw holes on the plate. Then insert the screws. Since there are six screws, you can insert them every other opening and tighten them. Be careful not to tighten them too much since it is going into plastic. I did the initial tightening and then pushed the display in a little bit more firmly and then twisted another turn or two. And here is what it looks like mounted to the top of the dashboard. This is much narrower than the first generation units that covered 18 holes. This one has one third fewer that block the vent holes and a narrower base that is shaped to channel air. Go back to the car and for the next part we will need to power down. First, open the doors and pop the hood. Go to the main menu and press safety. And then press the power off button. At this point, if you touch any button, the car will turn back on, so avoid touching anything. Wait about 15 minutes until you hear this sound. Go to the front of the car and remove the service panel. Using a 10 mm socket wrench, loosen the negative terminal cable on the 12 volt battery. 
remove the wire and place it away from any metal objects. I put it behind the plastic mount right here. The following is specifically for the Model 3. Go to the back seat and flip the two latches that are on the left and right sides of the seat where it attaches to the riser. Angle the seat and lift it up. You don't have to remove it. On the passenger side, you will see a black foam pad. Remove it and underneath there is the high voltage connector. Flip the latch on the connector and then pull it out. Place it off to the side and then you can lower the seat. Now the car is fully powered down and you can safely work with the electrical wiring. On the front passenger side, remove the panel underneath the glove box. It has five trim clips. Pop out the centers with the plastic pry bar and the panel can be pulled out. Be careful and remove the two wires for the speaker and footwell light. Then you can place this aside. To the right, remove the panel right here. Now there is a long trim piece that goes from the dash and runs down and along the door sill. It's a little tricky. Remove the trim clip on the top and it will pop out with a bit of help with the plastic pry bar around the edges. The weather stripping can be pulled back to access it easier. And then you can place it aside. This part is the hardest in the install. I've found the best way to do this is to sit on the ground next to the car, wedged between the door and the door sill. Since I'm left-handed, this method may not work for you. I reached up and by feel, it's the second plug on the right side next to the inside of the wall. It's a very tight fit. The connector has a little clip that you can wedge open with your finger and then it should come out. Like I said, you have to be very patient with this. Once removed, gently pull the wire down a little bit and connect the female end of the Y harness and it will snap in. Now take the male end of the Y harness and place it in the connector port that we just removed up above. Bend the wires a little bit and have the clip portion of the connector facing towards you. And then by feel, reach up and insert it into the opening and it will snap in. Congrats, that was the toughest part. Now take the wire with the red and blue ends and snake it through the body opening here. You can pull most of the wire through this opening. Then snake it through another opening so it goes into the dash area. and also pull the wire all the way through. This isn't explained very well in the manual, but you have to place the wire cable into the cavity that is along the whole length of the dash. You want to avoid any of the connector holes and you don't want to pinch the wire anywhere. After you place it the best you can, Go get the dashboard. Just temporarily lower the dash down onto the opening. Now we need to attach the red and blue wires from the screen to this cable from the CPU. After that is done, tuck them underneath and like before, be careful so they don't get pinched. I had to raise and lower it a few times to make sure that the cable fit in correctly. And all of the dashboard connectors snapped in. Place the dashboard so that the front of it goes in first at an angle. Now push it down. If all goes well, it should snap into place. The first time I did this, it didn't. So I had to lift it back up and I rearranged the wires to make it fit then snap it into place. Technically, I'm not sure how the wire will affect the airflow under the dashboard cover, but it all seems to work well after it's reinstalled. 
Make sure to route the wire cable in this under dash area carefully so that it doesn't get pinched or in the way of any of the connector tabs or sockets. One thing I noticed while driving the next day is that you may get some rattling under the dashboard. What I did to fix this is to use some gaffer tape to keep the wires from moving. I think the main issue is the red and blue connectors. Place the tape over these two and the issue is resolved. Here's a view under the dashboard showing the gaffer tape over the wiring. I need to verify that both screens are working, so I need to put power back on. Put the high voltage connector back in place, and also don't forget the foam piece. Back under the hood, connect the 12 volt battery negative terminal and tighten up the bolt. Then place the service panel back on. The car starts up. First thing I see is that the touch display is now operating. It takes another minute or so before the car's display does the boot procedure with the Tesla logo. And about a minute later, it seems to be working fine. And here is a view of the new touch dash screen starting up and it's now in the instrument panel mode. Now that I've verified that both screens are working, I can close everything up. On the front passenger side, finish putting back all the trim pieces on the right sides of the dashboard and under the glove box and sill trim pieces. On the driver's side, Place these two trim pieces back in. This is a view of the final installation. You can see how it looks compared to the car's main screen next to it and how it blends into the dash. By the way, this is a real carbon fiber dash and I think it looks pretty good with this dash display. That concludes today's unboxing and installation video. Part 2 will discuss setting up and using the software for the Handshow Dash touchscreen. I've been interested in seeing how these dash screens work when I first heard about them over a year ago. Now that this is the second version, it seems to be optimized both in hardware and software and at a better price. If you're interested in purchasing this improved dash screen, please see the link and coupon code RANGER for a 15% discount on purchase in the video description. I wanted to do a detailed installation since the instructions, while decent, some things need to be seen to be learned. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.